back with yet another one. Thanks for coming to Justin DTV, checking me out, seeing what we're doing. We're on a little wrestling kick here. Just a small one, just a small one. We're gonna do a lot of wrestling mixed in. We're gonna do a little something over here, a little something over there, something for your grandma, something for the kids. We're gonna jump out everywhere. Full disclosure, guys, I got the hat on. I went to Area 51 and I got a story to tell and I had to prove it. So, we'll talk about that in another video, but stay tuned for that. Today, let's get to today's news. The 10 most disgusting things wrestlers were forced to do in the WWE. I don't know what you call disgusting exactly. You know, disgusting could be a lot of things, but we're gonna find out today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let's just jump into this. Allow me to toast with the one thing that you are full of. Oh no, oh my God. Is that baby? If you watch wrestling, you know that <laughs> WWE wrestlers do much more than just wrestle. They give emotional speeches, have weddings, determine custody of their children in ladder matches, you know, normal stuff. But sometimes the stuff wrestlers are told to do is honestly really disgusting. What is this? Look, that's gone So let's go through them, starting with... Roman Reigns' first feud in 2020 was against Baron Corbin. For whatever reason, their rivalry really played up Roman's nickname at the time, The Big Dog. Corbin, along with Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler, taunted Reigns and even poured dog food on him one time. While that was kind of disgusting, it was nothing compared to what Roman did to Baron Corbin. Reigns and the Usos teamed up to take on Corbin, Ziggler, and Roode in a tag team match. Whoever lost would be forced to eat buckets of dog food. Ugh. Well, Corbin ended up losing, so you know what happened next. The Usos and Roman Reigns drenched Baron in the canine food. Yuck. I don't know what WWE actually used, but I would not want to have that stuff dumped on me. When Sheamus returned to WWE in 2015, I don't know what that is, but I, I ah, man, it, it looked nasty. Even if that was real, some, like real human meat, or like not human meat, but like, like meatballs or something like that. It still look nasty. I don't, I don't want to take a bath in it. You got to do what you got to do, though, I guess, for your job, for the, for the money and for the people. For the people. My life, your entertainment. Not only did he have a new look, but also a new attitude. The Celtic Warrior surprised everyone and attacked Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan on his first night back. This set into motion a match between Sheamus and Ziggler at Extreme Rules. But it wasn't just a normal match. It was a kiss my arse match. Whoever lost would have to kiss the other man's butt. Neither wrestler won any of that, but still, someone had to lose, and that person was Sheamus. Despite the stipulation, the Irishman was a sore loser and attacked Dolph. Not only that, but Sheamus then grabbed Ziggler by the head and forced him into his right cheek. It's bad enough having your face smothered by another man's buttocks, but making it even worse is the fact that these two had just wrestled for nine minutes and were sweaty and You're smelly. Sweaty. Yeah, if I was Dolph Ziggler, I would have just called him sick that day. In 1986, with that sweaty boy in his face, man, that was dirty though. He hit him up right up in the middle. Dirty. Next, Triple H was involved in the infamous curtain call incident where the game Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and Shawn Michaels broke character during a WWE show. WWE was mad at all four men, but Triple H was the only one who got punished. Part of that punishment was competing in a hog pen match. The only way to win was to throw your opponent inside a pig pen. The pen was filled with mud and live pigs, not to mention a lot of other things that got mixed into it. Now Triple H did win, but he still ended up getting messy. The game was slammed onto the slop and became covered in filth. The future COO of WWE had to bump and roll around in all that junk which was pretty disgusting. While Triple H would go on to become one of the most respected wrestlers of all time, he definitely didn't look like it during this match. No. I don't know if someone in WWE hated Tommy Dreamer or what, but in May of 2002, the heart and soul of ECW had to do some awful things. What? WWE began a storyline where Dreamer was, quote, just a rake. Was this man shaving his tongue? What is going on? What? What? Bro, that must have been so disgusting. Why? Why would... What? Heart and Soul ECW had to do some awful things. WWE began a storyline where Dreamer was, quote, just a regular guy. We would see Tommy doing all sorts of things, like getting a cup of water from a urinal oh. and then drinking it. That's actually one of the least disgusting ones. We also saw Dreamer brushing his dog's teeth and then using the same no, no, brush no, 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 no. to clean his own. Later, Tommy Dreamer went to get his hair cut and then ate it. 
How exactly was this entertaining? Later, the hardcore icon asked a fan eating a hot dog if he could have a bite. The fan ended up dropping the hot dog to the floor, but that didn't stop Tommy Dreamer. He wiped up the dog and took a bite out of it. This is horrifying. Although, another fan took a bite out of the hot dog too, so Why? I guess Tommy isn't the only sick person. As Dreamer was having a bite to eat, The Undertaker came out. I can't believe they dragged him into this too. The dead man gave Tommy Dreamer a cup filled with Taker's tobacco spit, and yes, he actually spit into it. And Tommy Dreamer oh! actually drank it. No, no, no. That is so nasty. <laughs> that is nasty. That is so nasty. Look at his face, can't even believe it. What are you doing? Man, I don't know, man. Oh. You guys make me watch this stuff, man. I don't need to say anything. The Undertaker's face sums up all this perfectly. Bastion Booger would normally be a pretty forgettable wrestler had it not been for his gimmick. He was a big, gluttonous, unkept man and was probably the grossest wrestler in WWE history and this is all intentional. Now Bastion himself never had to do anything that was particularly disgusting but his opponents did. Booger's finisher was named Trip to the Bat Cave. That's because Booger would sit down on his opponent oh. with his crotch right in their face. Not only did you have a huge man suddenly sitting on top of you, but you also had his junk right next to your oh, mouth. Thankfully for the WWE roster, Bastion Booger wasn't around for long, but he still managed to take a few trips to the Batcave before leaving the company. One of DX's most memorable rivalries was against the Commands and the Spirit Squad. The two went at it throughout 2006, and the best moments were usually the ones created by Triple H and Shawn Michaels. During one episode of Raw, Triple H impersonated Vince McMahon and made fun of them. Shawn Michaels came out later, appropriately dressed like Shane McMahon. Eventually, the real big fans came out along with the Spirit Squad. Unfortunately for them, DX had a little surprise. Oh my, no! oh my god! King! That's some real holy crap. It literally came from the heavens. Yeah. Now, of course, the stuff that fell on them wasn't the real deal. I, I don't think. But still, still would you want to have whatever this is dropped on you? I wouldn't. Say what you will about Michael Cole, but the man is a trooper. He's been with WWE for 25 years and does whatever they ask him to do, and I mean that. In 2011, Cole began a feud with his fellow Raw commentator, Jerry Lawler. It was one of the worst rivalries in WWE history, and it went on for way too long. The thing finally came to an end at Over the Limit, where Jerry Lawler beat Cole in a Kiss My Foot match. This one was similar to the Kiss My Arse match, but much nastier. You want to know why? Well, what? <laughs> I, <laughs> my eyes are burning, <laughs> literally, because I'm crying and my eyes are just burning. Guys, what the freak? Why is it, boy, I was about to freeze it because I didn't want to see the foot go into the mouth, but this is, he's just putting barbecue sauce? What is this, like, oh my gosh, You're like, what the freak? Okay, all right, all right, all right. Must hear. You want to know why? Well, first, Jim Ross poured barbecue sauce into Michael Cole's mouth and all over his face. Then, Bret Hart came out, locked Michael Cole in the sharpshooter, and then Jerry Lawler made Cole kiss his foot. That's just miserable. Unfortunately for Cole, a year later, he'd be put in a match against John Cena. First, Cena ripped off the commentator's clothes, exposing way too much of Michael Cole, and then he poured sauce all over Cole's body. Did a WWE man? writer have a barbecue fetish or something? And they got a lot of it. This was just <laughs> sick. But luckily, Michael Cole's mostly stayed out of the ring ever since all this. The Boogeyman was one of the sickest WWE wrestlers of all time. Oh. It was pretty disgusting seeing Boogeyman eating worms every week. However, what earns Boogeyman's worms a spot on this list is the poor victims that were forced to consume the creepy crawlies. Big Vito had to eat them at Armageddon in 2005. Nunzio, the Dicks, oh, and many others oh all had to gosh. open wide and chow down big. on the invertebrates as well. Uh. They really took that Goosebumps book seriously. Oh my god! Oh. No, 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 no! Don't do that! Don't no. Do it. no! Oh my god! No. Maybe it isn't that bad, but still, you won't catch me eating any worms.
Eddie Guerrero's death in 2005 was one of the saddest days in all of wrestling. In the months after this great loss, Rey Mysterio, one of Eddie Guerrero's closest friends, received a major push. He entered the 2006 Royal Rumble and outlasted everyone. The victory earned him a world championship match at WrestleMania and was a real feel-good moment. A few days later on SmackDown, Rey kicked off the show to celebrate the accomplishment. However, the moment was interrupted by Randy Orton. Now, by itself, this wouldn't have been anything memorable. However, Orton decided to say this. Eddie ain't in heaven. Eddie's down there. In hell! This was the moment where the whole thing went too far. Sure, Randy was just following the script, but it felt in poor taste to use Guerrero's death to get a reaction and get fans to buy the next pay-per-view. Orton himself later said that he was 100% uncomfortable with it. Speaking of Eddie, did you know that his daughter wrestled in WWE? To find out who she is, watch this video. Guys, what, what in the world was that? I guess they said the 10 most disgusting things. I just, I haven't eaten lunch and I just, I don't think I'm going to. It's the worms and the, and, and the, and the, 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 the dog food and the freaking, the other thing, what's the other? Yeah, the, the guy with in the dip. Oh, the dip. Dude, ew. Just ew. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and the freaking guy with the the big diaper on, it would it look dirty and he sits on you and it's called the bat cave or the I would just I'd quit right there. I'd be like, I'm not doing this. Uh I would my life would flash before my eyes before his butt and his the junk sat in my face and I'd be like, no, 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 You better do something different. We're gonna do something different. You could pin me another way. That that can't be it. I'd rather die. I'd rather get fired. I'd rather do this whole thing on live television and make it the mockery of of wrestling because I'm not doing that. So shout out to these people that decided to endure this for their career. I hope it worked out for them. I'm just, I, I don't even know what else to say. I don't even, that was, I'm, I'm, I think I'm done here. I think I'm done. You feel that? You feel that? We're done here. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.